Good morning, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing on about 154 square feet of bed space in my backyard. That does not include the orchard area and it does not include the bags. Today, I figured it would be a great day to uh, do a garden tour. I planted out yesterday, so today is Sunday. So I'm gonna do a full garden tour for you. Also, uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, um, and share if you feel it. Uh, you can visit me over on Instagram at Miss MS Asia Spratly. Um, I post over there about everything going on in the garden pretty much every day. So let's get right into this garden tour. So we are gonna start in the greenhouse. Um, and so these are the extra plants that I have which is a big difference from last year when I had a whole lot of extra plants. These are for my mom. These go in a little bit later. Those are the eggplants that I started like back in December. <laughs> and these are the sweet potato slips that I finally for the first time grew. Those are some foxgloves. I had some problems with germination, started them over. Um, and so that's what we have. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna pot them up into smaller sales next year if I grow them again um, because I think putting them in these large containers was not helpful. Um, these are the delphiniums that I picked out of the winter sowing jugs but I didn't actually take care of them so <laughs> those probably aren't going to do much of anything. These are the peas that we planted together a little while ago so they're starting to make their way up the trellis hopefully they make their way up the trellis uh soon before it gets too hot these are the beans that we planted on the other side of the trellis together so they're sporadically coming up but i pushed the soil back around them and the others are coming up too so this should be a beautiful trellis full of beans uh once we get into the season good the potatoes are still going strong. So that's a line of potatoes right there. They're doing really good. I moved the comfrey pot over here for aesthetic reasons. Everything else is black and there's that one um, comfrey in a black pot. If I can find a spot, I'm gonna transplant those into the ground. And I'll show you why once we get into the orchard area. Uh, my second year asparagus has sprouted and is really tall so they've started ferning out um so next year i'll actually be able to eat those there's some that only have one that came up from from that crown and then there's others that have seven or eight coming out of the crown so that's cool uh the beets that we planted out together they are coming up and there's the spinach that we planted together as well the beans have come up. Uh, there were two in this area right here that didn't come up. And when I moved the soil back, I didn't see the bean. So maybe it um, rotted in the ground. So I re I reseeded it right here earlier today. Uh, we have some nasturtiums here. Um, we have a tromboncino squash. And then in the back, we have sunflowers. I strategically placed the sunflowers by the trellises this year so that I could have more sunflowers, but they wouldn't be like falling over and stuff because I can um, attach them to the trellis once they start to get bigger. So I did that with pretty much all the sunflowers. They're near a trellis or they're near a fence um, because I like neat. And over here, we have paste tomatoes, determinate paste tomatoes. Uh, so there's six determinate paste tomatoes surrounded by uh, basil and what is that? Marigolds. So basil is said to make tomatoes taste better or have a different taste, something like that. Um, and marigolds are said to keep the pest away. So that's where, how we planted this. There's that one sunflower in the back um, and I'm gonna put a bamboo stake by that. Uh, it was best to put it on the north side of the uh, garden. So this garden, th that is the north end of the garden and I think it'll be beautiful to have um, a sunflower sprout up there. Along the back is mint. This is chamomile, uh, lemon balm, and this is feverfew. Um, and so that's what's on the back side 
of that garden bed. In the middle, we have two peppers. All of my peppers are in bags. Um, this is how I grew them last year and I was very successful. And so I'm gonna continue that. Up here, there's this one onion that I just left to see what happens out of the ones that I planted too deep. And actually, this one is going to, to flower. So I'm just gonna pull that out. Um, I think it's actually the same onion. <laughs> <laughs> so there's beans here. I pulled out the turnips that wasn't doing much of anything. Um, these are beans that we planted together. I reseeded, well, that one is coming up and I reseeded down here just with a random bean. Lettuce is still going. Clearly that one is about to bolt. Um, I'll probably pull those out within the next week or two. Um, back here is the same setup with the six paste tomatoes, basil and marigolds. Um, this is also a tromboncino, so that will go up and around this trellis. So those two tromboncinos will end up meeting, and there's a sunflower back there. Over here is a honey boat squash, um, and I believe this one may be a table queen squash. Right there. Sorry, y'all. And then there's another sunflower. Across the back in the pots are mint, oregano, and a, another fever few plant um all the way down the beginning of the garden when you walk in is pepper plants uh so i put the pepper plants here because last year i did not need to stake them they weren't like really wild uh, i also did uh tip take the tips off uh so we'll see how this works but i felt like this would be a better option than tomatoes that's being staked because they start to fall over and stuff once they get heavy back here on the bed that's right in front of the um compost bin is these are extra sunflowers there's dahlias back here and there's some zinnias back here i felt like it really wouldn't matter much um because they're at the back. If they start to fall over or anything like that, I will I will uh, stake them. And then we have tomatoes in bags back here. The red cups, like I told you, I'm going to make labels out of them as opposed to leaving the cups. Because on a windy day, those cups might fly and I won't know what's in these bags. So I'm going to work on that today. And I'm probably just going to cut these cups and use the name that's already on them to label them. Um, we have, uh, what's that, a kabacha winter squash. I think these are both kabacha winter squash, yes. And they are planted in between the um, leeks that aren't dying and are trying to grow. So I'm going to leave them. I also planted a little bit of basil in between because if they do die, I still want something to be in the bed. We also have some borage here, there. There's some dill mixed in over there too. Um, and then we have the onions in the front. Nothing has started to bolt over here. So that is a plus. I'm excited about that. In bags here, we have more tomatoes. We have a sunflower, marigold, basil, borage, basil, marigold. On the other side, that's where we're gonna have sweet potatoes once it gets warm enough to put them in more tomatoes in these bags i got a bunch of different varieties of tomatoes for some reason i really enjoy growing tomatoes so I'm, I'm gonna grow tomatoes put some cardboard down to try to get some of the weeds to die well it's actually grass i think um so that i can well i'm gonna put some straw over top of it too this bed still has some green leafy vegetables going from um, fall that i just moved over here some of them bolted, some of them they didn't, so I moved them to this bed because this bed is for eggplant and we have a while before we put our eggplant out. I threw some nasturtiums in and there is a basil right here. Um, but that Swiss chard looks beautiful. And we get, this bed gets some shade. So I'm thinking that they may survive throughout the summer. I'm hoping they do. Um, so more tomatoes along the back. These three are potatoes. Um, I planted them the same time that I planted the bed together with you. And you can see those potatoes are coming up too. Um, the vole or mole has been in this bed, both of these beds. Um, so 
I did get something yesterday, hopefully to get rid of it. <laughs> that is an echinacea and it actually has flower sprouts coming. So I'm gonna get me some purple cone flower this year. Uh, my strawberries, the vole has been over here, but they still seem to be fine. I've literally been going through and just walking on the beds in between to get the soil to settle back down. Um, not something that you probably should do because it can compact your soil, but that's what I've been doing just to make sure we have contact with the soil and the plant. Uh, here's another section of the tomatoes. Ooh, I almost fell. Here's another section of tomatoes, which I just staked with the bamboo pole. Um, I put the thicker end down into the ground this year. I don't know why I didn't think about that last year. Well, into the bag. I don't know why I didn't think about that last year. Um, we have our blueberries, which they are growing. Kind of small now, but they're growing. Um, probably gonna cover them once they start to ripen so that the birds don't eat them. But those are all of the blueberry bushes. Sunflower here, sunflower there. Artichoke, artichoke ranunculus. I didn't realize the vole was in this bed until that artichoke started to uh, like wither or whatever. So that's probably the same thing that happened to this ranunculus plant. I'm still going to leave it because it was going to die once it, well, it was going to die back once it uh, got hot. So I'm going to leave it and then I'll see what happens in the next cool period. This is going to be the melon bed. And I did plant out the melon seeds where you see those little humps but it may not be warm enough for them to come up yet. So I'm just waiting that out. Uh, sunflower here, sunflower down there. All across the front are the teddy bear sunflowers. Uh, they were so pretty last year, I love them. Um, so I wanted more. <laughs> uh, so nasturtiums here, marigolds here. They plant radish seeds in between where there's a little bit of extra space um, because once this stuff starts to grow, those radishes should be just about finishing up. On this side, we have our trellis and there are eight tomatoes. There's four tomatoes in between each T-post, in between each T-post. And so I will, I will, uh, I will trellis them up the T-post and prune them very heavily. Uh, you have a white uh, marigold here that supposedly gets really big. That's why I put it on the end. So it technically has all of this space. Um, there's basil and then there's more marigold going down this one as well. So the entrance to the orchard, uh, which if you remember, I had to take out the rest of the fence right here when I decided to put up the trellis at the beginning of the garden. Um, so I just kind of step over things. <laughs> this is a daisy. It's a hollyhock. I cannot remember the name of that plant back there. Um, but I believe it is native to my area. I got it from um, Grow for Wildlife. They sent me some and that was really nice of them. Um, and so that's coming back and you can see all of the buds. So it's gonna be a beautiful yellow flower. This is an echinacea. I thought this was echinacea, but I'm really not sure. And it's getting shaded out. So it's not really growing for me to be able to tell what it is. Um, that is another daisy as well so the daisies are huge this daisy is planted directly into my soil i mentioned that in my video about uh you know when someone said what would i change that's one of the daisies that's like in the soil um and it's doing amazingly so when you walk in you have the roses back here this is lavender and the lavender actually has some um, buds on it. So I should be getting some lavender flowers soon. It's another rose. These are knockout roses. So they're very small roses. Um, back here, I planted some more echinacea and there's one random strawberry plant. Um, and so this is directly in my soil. And if you realize or notice how much bigger the leaves are on this, uh, plant than the ones that I just showed you, um, this is raspberry. It's a yellow raspberry. It's pretty. Um, parsley, curled leaf parsley that's been in here since last year. That's an Italian parsley that is about to flower. But I planted more yesterday, so that'll take that spot. Uh, oregano, which 
I need to harvest and dry because it's growing huge and I don't want it to flower on me. There's some comfrey. So this is why I said I want to find a spot in the ground for the comfrey that's in the pot. It's growing amazingly. And these flowers are beautiful. Um, that's some sage. I planted another um, parsley right here. Um, this is my peach tree, which I'm gonna prune differently. I'm gonna try to prune differently at the end of the season when it's time to prune. Uh, this is some thyme that started flowering, but I put more in there. Um, that's another comfrey plant with the beautiful flowers. Another oregano. Um, over here is a new planting. So these are, I think, butterfly flowers. They're supposed to be a pretty blue flower. I want them to go up the trellis. Uh, these are two loofah. I was not successful with loofah last year, so I'm hoping for a better outcome <laughs> this year. Um, and that's amaranth, which I, I believe someone said I can kind of move up the trellis. So that'll be pretty too. I put some marjoram in here. They're annuals, so I didn't think it would be a big deal to plant those there. Put a zinnia over there, zinnia over here. And I grew rosemary from seed. Um, so that's my rosemary seedling, the one that came up and grew a decent amount. So hopefully I will grow that and then just start to propagate it. Um, another comfrey plant. I put in another zinnia. This is the grapevine. And if you can see, let's see if I can get you to see, there are little grape clusters starting to grow. So that's nice. Another zinnia here, another comfrey, some more sage. Oh, I didn't show you all the apple trees. So these are the apple trees. I pulled the flowers off of everything this year. So we will see. Um, and then I planted, grew some tarragon inside from seed. And so I planted some tarragon here as well. And last but not least <laughs> is the flower bed. I've pulled all of the pansies out. It just was starting to look like a lot, but I pulled the pansies out. These are the snapdragons that I planted last spring and they are still here. This area gets a little bit of shade. So I'm thinking that's probably why they haven't like died out in our very hot, hot summers. Um, and then I put in some um, gumfrina, and uh, there was another one, and I don't know if this is the Gumfrina or the other one, um, but we have Calendula that was here from last year that's starting to flower. Um, there's Hollyhocks over here. This is another one of the plants that uh, was sent to me from Grow from God, uh, Grow for Wildlife. This is one. That is one, and. Uh, I believe this may be one too. No, no, no. It's this one. That's in it. So they're native. Um, that's a hollyhock. I went through and put zinnias all the way across the back. I have to watch those because of the uh, gutter. The back side of this doesn't get much water. So I water them often. This is a uh, carnation. This is in from last year as well. Um, and it has some buds. So I'm excited to see uh when that grows i believe this is milkweed from last year so i'm excited about that i'm pretty sure that's milkweed from last year uh this is a poppy i just kind of threw these seeds out here early in uh spring late winter so some of them came up that's they, they're not they're not gonna last through the summer but happy to have them and all of the calendula that's growing this is a sunflower. Oh, scabiosa. That's the other one. It was gumfrina and scabiosa. So I put those in. There's a little nasturtium. <laughs> so we'll see what that does. I have straw flowers and asters still growing in the house because I didn't get the seeds in time. So I'm also going to mix those into the flower bed as well. So I think it's going to be beautiful. There's some dahlias in here too. That is the garden in April. Um, waiting for time to plant out my cucumbers um, and my squash, eggplant, and uh, what else? Oh, and my sweet potato slips. So that's my little space in my urban setting. 
I hope everyone has a wonderful week. I will see you back here on uh, what Wednesday at this point because I'm going to post this as a bonus video. Um, and I am so excited that seedling daycare is over <laughs> and we are pretty much just waiting for the warm, warm weather so that we can start eating our harvest. Have a wonderful day.